Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on Prim's algorithm maze generation. Uh, I'm just going to show you this project that I've uh, made previously. Uh, when you press the play button, it creates this cube, and if I hold down the space bar, it will start generating a random maze. And if I let go, it will stop, and if I press, it will keep going until eventually the whole thing is just one massive maze. And this maze is generated using an algorithm known as Prim's algorithm, which is a method of generating minimum spanning trees, which is, in essence, a maze that will never loop back on itself. So to explain this concept, uh, I'll just be running over Prim's algorithm to explain what it is. So this is, imagine a map. Uh, if I wanted to, say, build a railway between these four, five towns, I would start by going, so you pick one to start at, uh, you look at which one is the smallest uh, node that connects it, so you choose between 9 or 2, 2 is the smallest, so you, B is now part of the, the minimum spanning tree, now your options are 9 and 5, 5 is the smallest, so D is now in the minimum spanning tree, now your options are 9, 4 and 3, 3 is the smallest, so this is now in this minimum spreading tree, and then what's left is 9 and 4, C becomes part of the minimum spanning tree, and then you get a minimum spanning tree of these places, and this would be the most efficient way of building a railway system between those spaces. Uh, if we look at a different example, we can take this idea and apply it to our game design in, for making mazes. So here I want you to imagine that these nodes are all uh, pathways and nodes simultaneously. If we start at 1, you'll see that we go 1, 2, 3, because these are all uh, the smallest numbers. Just keep going, and then next the smallest number is 7. What's important is that we mustn't loop back on ourselves, so we miss 8, but we do do 9, because it's the next smallest number. Then we miss 10, do do 11. Next number is 13, and then 14. We don't do 15 because that would cause a loop. Uh, the next number would be 17. Uh, and after that, it would be 19, and so on, so on, until you get a maze like this. And this is what the program generates. It generates an array of random numbers, and then it draws in the maze, if you can just sort of imagine, like it will look a bit like this, but it, what's most important is that the smallest number will be the start of the maze, and the largest number will always be the end of the maze. So that way we're always generating a maze with a solvable outcome. So if we go back to the Unity project, I can show you some of the script. Uh, I'm just gonna make a new script. I'm going to call it maze generator. The first thing we want to do is we want to make a cube struct for the algorithm to manipulate with the, within the script. rounds up our um, struct for our cube. Now this might look like a lot, but because of the way uh, scripts for game objects work, we only have to generate these structs in the first iteration. In any following, uh, you could change scene and come back to it, and then you can just do dot uh, generate, and it will work. Speaking of which, so the idea is you attach the, this maze to a script and then you do dot generate and it will generate a maze. 
Uh, the way I've structured this, you don't have to do it like this, but I've made it so it gets vector three position from reference and a vector three scale from reference. And we'll use that scale to decide the length of the uh, the maze. So if it's a three by three, it'll be a three by three maze, which won't be very complicated. All right, so we've got a very simple generate function for easy delete function and a build function for our maze generator. We're now going to have a custom search array uh, method that will basically loop through the array. So let's have an int count equals zero. We're going to have two or three for loops inside each other for x. Case zero is determining if a cube is on the inside or outside of the thing. So if z i So the idea is to call this at the start of the array to fill our cube with these uh, carvable objects. And the carvable objects are going to be the outside. Function goes through our array and adds the outside layer to a list. And we do this so that we could pick one of those at random and then choose that as our starting cube. After we've done Prim's algorithm, we're going to call this function to create all the cubes. So we don't need to return the cube every function, but because we need it for this one function, we can have this uh, empty cube as basically a null pointer to say that you know you don't need uh, this is just an empty cube. Now we're finally going to get onto the big one, which is Prim's algorithm. So we call private void Prim's algorithm. And we run this to calculate which uh, maze pieces we have to cut out in order to get the result we want. This means is if um, the thing that we returned is smaller than the current smallest option, we're going to make that our option to possibly be at. This is going to filter through the entire array, find the smallest option, and continue leaping through till it's filtered out to the smallest possible cube that we can add, and then it's going to add it. And if we run out of things to add, it's going to exit the loop. Down to the last function now. Last function is neighbor cubes, and neighbor cubes is definitely the the most complicated. So this is going to be our way of looping through. We're going to use set different modes because this is a recursive loop as well. So we want to be very careful how we laid this out because otherwise we might create an infinite loop. So I know that might look particularly complicated, but what that's really saying is, is the cube that we're looking at plus or minus one still in the array? Which is important because we don't want to get an error where it might look outside the array and cause uh, a glitch. Or an error with 
uh, array indexing. So let's have a look. This is a recursive call now. We're going to call the function inside itself, and we're going to see with foot with uh, the second version of our function uh, if it how many things inside the array which are already in our tree are next to the one that we're currently looking at. And what that basically means is if it's possible to create a loop in the array, we need to basically not allow it in our options, otherwise we'll get loops in our array. The array holding all the possible options equals zero equals one. That means there's only one next to it. Uh, then we're going to return that. So we don't want um, our parallel block to be a diagonal. So if y and x equal 1, or minus 1, or x and i, x and z equals 1 or minus 1, or y and z equals 1 or minus 1, we're going to basically filter that out and say that we don't want that. One more statement that we're going to try and fit at the end here, which is already a huge if statement as it is. It's just, and we don't want x, y, and z to be all zero, because that means we're looking at the own cube and we'll get into a loop. Which shouldn't happen anyway, because um, cube is never carvable, but this is just a precaution in case it creates uh, more processing than it needs to. Try it out. So this is our one script. Um, we, that doesn't mean we're done necessarily. So, so create a prims algorithm maze. Prim test maze, that's fine. The object, and we're going to drag Prim's maze here. I'm going to press play. Uh, make sure this is above one. And then we're going to get the next step. And that will generate our cube and. Oh, okay. Alright, so we did miss a couple of things. Uh, just looking at my version. Uh, in particular we missed these, this line of code here that sets the weight for uh, each cube uh, when the array is initialized, and also set delete, which is all the stuff that's the floor, so the stuff that you don't want to carve out. And added an extra clear here because I think that was causing a few errors with um, temps and uh, all, the, all the cubes, each iteration not being cleared properly. Uh, this function is, it needed a little bit of corrections on the if statements and if I just Correct to this, we might have a workable demo. So this is something I made earlier with the code that does work. Uh, it's filled with uh, different debugs and slightly better uh, variable names just to keep track. And it's also commented out properly. And uh, in particular, this function here, if the object is carvable, it will make it red. So the idea is all the cubes will you'll be able to see all the cubes that have been carved out because they will be different color. 
So if we go over to this Unity project and we make sure this is all set up, you can just press play. Press play start and it makes your mix. And if you want to change that, you can just change the scale here. And that's that. So where, where would this be useful? Um, the idea is that because this is a object here, all of the structs and the cube itself is stored in this object. So if you ever need to change scenes and come back, for example, if you want to change to an inventory screen and come back, uh, you could then regenerate the maze exactly as it was when you left off. Uh, and if you were to expand on this code, there's a lot, this is definitely not a finished uh, code, this is just how much I can fit in in this time, but if I were to expand it, I would look at different generate functions, because at the moment we're only generating cube mazes, but you could create uh, different generate modes, for example, you could make this maze a sphere instead of a cube, or you could make it so that uh, you set, you don't set get deletable, and the maze just um, carves the whole cube, including the hollowed out bit, as well as the outside bit. And of course, if you want to find this code, I'll have it attached somewhere so it's easy to find, and you'll be able to hopefully create some of your own functions. Alright, thank you very much for watching.